Sandy McIver here, Stampin' and Blogging, Stampin' with Sandy, and this week for our techniques within Stamping and Blogging, we are working with the Spotlight Technique, and Heather and I decided that, you know, every once in a while we're going to make one of these public, because we get a lot of questions about what's inside Stampin' and Blogging, what do we expect, what can we find in there, well, we're going to walk you through exactly what you can find with our weekly techniques, okay, so I start with sharing uh, what the card looks like, okay, the stamp set I used for the technique today birthday blooms and we're playing with a couple of the new in colors peekaboo peach flirty flamingo old olive we're going to be using stays on black because we're getting the paper wet and for the stamens in the center of the flower I used my crushed curry marker the stamp set comes in two styles. You can either get wood or clear mount. I've got the clear mount, so if you do as well, you need E handle and the B handle. You're also going to need the aqua painter and some paper towel in order to change the colors with the aqua painter. And I'll just give you the cardstock. Okay, so because I used two colors on the flower, for the first card that I created, I used the flirty flamingo background. This time when we finish this card, I'm going to use the peekaboo peach because I really couldn't decide which background I liked better. So it's four and a quarter by 11 and I've scored it at five and a half. I'll be folding it there. These two pieces are watercolor paper. Four by five and a quarter. This little guy down here is two and five eighths by three and seven eighths because he needs a mat behind him which is two and three quarters by four. Okay, so it's an eighth of an inch smaller. But we need that because we're going to be stamping over top of two layers and there's going to be a little halo or missing stamped image as it steps down to the next piece of cardstock and we hide that by putting the mat in. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is layer these two pieces of watercolor paper and you kind of want to get it as centered as possible. I put a small amount of snail on the back. Um, don't use fast fuse, you're going to take this apart again. Okay, so that's why I use snail there. Kind of like where that is. Give it a little press down, make sure it stays in, in the right spot. Make sure it didn't twist where you were doing that like mine just did. Okay, and so the first thing you're going to do, and you want a really juicy stays on ink pad for this, so if yours needs a little bit of ink, you might want to do that before you start this technique. And I'm going to take this stamped image and stamp it over both of the pieces of cardstock. Okay? And I like to press firmly and hold it a little bit when I'm dealing with watercolor paper because watercolor paper is not smooth and so it takes a little bit for that ink to soak down in. Okay, so like in that one. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to be working on these little guys here so I want to make sure that I get those nice and inky. Moving that card out of the way because I need to come in from the top here. And I'm just going to do this. So you want a nice outlined image and if you find that you get a spot that didn't work too well don't worry you can use a black marker and fix that when we're all finished okay all right so there's the first step now you're going to see what I mean by the halo I'm just going to grab something pointy here see right there where it didn't stamp that's because it's going down off the top piece of paper oh you want me to zoom in there now you can see it better right there Okay, and so our little mat will cover that. Okay, so now we're going to pull it apart and we're going to paint our images and I'm going to use my ink pad lids to do that. So you squeeze it together in the center and then open it, but don't flip it all the way in because we're going to be using the lids, okay? You need some paper towel because that's how you're going to change colors and you need an aqua painter. Just making sure it's clean before I start. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to gently pull this apart, set the background aside, and we're going to be working on this. And now that you see what my layout is and how I work, I'm going to zoom back in again and I'm going to color this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is start by deciding where my sun is, and I think my sun's going to be right there. And so I'm going to take the lighter color, the peekaboo, and I'm going to add where I think there's going to be. Uh, sun hitting the flower petals, okay? And I'm just doing this quite quickly. And what I'm going to do is, after I kind of explain this to you, I am going to turn the music on and stop talking and then I can speed it up for you, okay? So there's my first part and now what I'm doing is I'm just going to squeeze my aqua painter just a little bit, make sure I get all that paint off of there while I come in with a second color, okay? And so what I'm doing is I am starting to flood each petal with the second color and I am butting up against that yellow that I stuck down there in the first place and I'm going to come back and blend them because they're drying quite quickly because I didn't wet my watercolor paper to begin with and I did that on purpose 
because that's how I like to color these, okay? I'm coming back in with my yellow and I'm kind of going back over top of it and I'm kind of using it to blend in a little bit but I'm going to add some more of the pink the flamingo um, I'm just kind of adding my highlights at this point in time and the center of my flower is going to be yellow so I'm just going to flood that in and we're going to come back and you know kind of sort out the details in a bit here we're just kind of getting the base color down and making sure that there aren't any little white spots because the little white spots by the time you're finished really do show up. Okay, so I'm finished with my yellow. I'm cleaning my marker or my aqua painter and I'm going back in for my second layer of pink and I'm trying to work as fast as I can because I've got most of the petal wet right now so with the yellow I can blend these two together without a line showing. Okay, so that's why I'm going super, super fast. And I'm trying to stay within the lines. Okay, and you're going to do the same thing with the little baby guys so come on in and for these guys you can just lay down a base coat of the flamingo okay over here let's just lie there okay now I'm going to clean my aqua painter and I'm going to come back in with yellow at the top And this is giving my big flower an opportunity to dry a little bit too because I don't want to go back and do the green while this is still wet. Okay, Okay. so now I'm grabbing some more pink and I'm going to come in from the bottom and try and darken this a little bit. There we go. Oops, I kind of went outside of the lines there. And don't forget these little guys up here. Okay. Need a little bit of yellow. And let me see if I can just sneak a little bit more dark pink in there. Okay, I think I can. All right, so my flowers are pretty good. So what I'm going to do is close one of my ink pads so I have room. I'm bringing in my green. Again, squeeze it in the center. This is old olive. Okay. And you're looking for spots where it's reasonably dry, where there isn't a big puddle of water so that it doesn't run into your flower. And you're just going to quickly add your green. And I am hurrying. I would normally take a little bit more time with this. my heat tool and uh, heat set that to dry it so that I could turn it over and actually I'm going to use fast fuse. I like to use fast fuse when we're playing with watercolor paper because it's a little bit stronger and we've gotten the paper wet so you know there's a good chance that it's going to warp and so this will actually help to hold it down a little bit better. All right so you've got an eighth of an inch room all the way around when you layer these two pieces just like that. Give it a good burnish on the back and add more snail to or fast fuse or tear and tape. Tear and tape is nice and strong too. And 
What we need to do now is line up the black outlines, okay? So this sometimes can take a little bit. Kind of find one spot on each side that you can kind of line it up. And lay that little guy down just like that. Okay, so give it a good burnish. And now we're ready to put it onto our card. So I'm just going to fold this little guy in half. There we go. And more adhesive. And voila! All right, we're almost done. Okay, so a couple things. I like to darken the yellow in the center, so I'm using the crushed curry marker and just adding a few more spots just to brighten it up just a hair. And the other thing that you want to do is if you've got a mark that really, really, really is exceeding where the mat is, take a black marker and just draw that line back in. Because there's a couple of spots that that will happen in. So there you go. There's one of many variations of how to do the spotlight technique. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you click the link before, below the video, or if you're not on my blog watching it, you can go to my blog and there's a PDF file and there's also what we call a one sheet wonder. And we provide these with an awful lot of our cards and stamping and blogging because if you're a demonstrator and you want to have the class and you want to be able to provide your customers with a handout, like a take home sheet after they've done the technique so they can do it over again, we do all that work for you and you are allowed to print them off and hand them out to your customers. So thank you so much for stopping in today. Happy stamping and happy spotlight technique.